You ever get those days where you just feel like making your life more difficult? Yeah, it turns out today is one such of those days. I just kind of woke up and I said to myself, do you know what, I really want to paint a challenge piece. Now, of course, I'm speaking retrospectively here because since I painted this piece, it was featured on Warhammer TV. And kind of because it was featured on Warhammer TV, that was sort of what made me want to maybe do a tutorial or at least some sort of video explaining what I did. So the idea was here that I wanted to paint a piece that I treated more like a traditional painting. So that would mean things like no washes, no metallics, but techniques like glazing and wet blending and that kind of thing would still be allowed because those are techniques that transfer to traditional painting. So I decided to set about that and uh, this is the palette of colours that I wanted to use. Now I knew this was going to be quite tricky so I wanted to pick a miniature that I felt like wasn't going to kind of push me too hard on the sculpt front. So I decided to go with Sergeant Teleon from my Ultramarines army which is a classic miniature that I really really love anyway. Let's take a look at how it all came together, because this was a fun one. Okay, before we get started, I just want to show you the consistency of these Scale 75 artist paints that I'm using. So this is the Dark Ultramarine here, and you can see it only takes a, a couple of brushfuls of water before it starts to get down to the consistency of a normal paint. But for the base coating of the Dark Ultramarine, we're literally just getting a nice even colour of this dark blue onto all of the armour plates, so that I can start to establish a nice base to build on top of. You can see that's nice and clean and smooth and flat now. So now that we're starting to get into the cobalt blue, this is the beginning of the highlighting process. We're going to have to build up quite a lot of highlight in here because we're doing this in the more traditional sense where we're starting with our shade colour. So just picking tops of surfaces, extreme edges, that kind of thing. We're just going to start to build in a nice few thin layers. And as we start to mix now here, you can see I'm introducing white into the cobalt blue. And I'm going to make a couple of distinct mixes here, one as a top highlight, one as a mid highlight. And that's both of those established nicely now. And we're going to continue to work in those highlights now, again looking for areas that are facing the light source, extreme edges, that kind of thing, just to sort of pick out where we're going to accent those areas, bring those highlights in and make things look lovely. Here comes in the last highlight now. And then we'll also just put a few dots of white here or there just to really get some nice reflectiveness going on. Okay, so that's how we're looking with the armor all worked up. That's just those four different blues and then the white. I want to start working on the cloth now. And this is basically going to be a mixture of brown and yellow with some white added. And you can see on the screen which colors I'm using. But we will be focusing as we build this up much more heavily towards white. So we start off with a good glob of white in there. That's going to help give us some nice solid coverage. Brown and white when mixed together are very good coverage colors. So that will help that sort of yellowy tone cover well. And we'll start off just getting a really nice even base coat on all of these areas first. Parchment and cloth. Now that I've got that, I can start just adding more white into that mix to start to bring up some nice highlights. And again, similar principle to with the armor plates, we're just dealing with a more textured surface here. But we still want to be looking for edges, areas that are facing the light source, and just continuing to build in that nice highlight. Because these are artist colors, they do blend a little bit better. So as you can see, even though I'm only using a few stages of highlights here, I'm getting pretty good transitions. And when it's all said and done, it looks like a nice cream colored cloth. Okay, next up, I've just used some black here, mixed with some white to put some grey highlights in and to base the silver NMM, touch up all of the black areas, that kind of thing. And I'm going to continue to work that NMM, again in the same sort of way, just placing highlights towards the top surfaces. But because this is an NMM, also just being very conscious of contrast. You can see as I'm finished here that I've come all the way up to white, but I've left some really dark spots still close to it. I'm also going to do a gold NMM in a similar way using yellow, brown and white, but we will probably skip over that. For the skin tones here, we're going to be using a mixture of brown, magenta, yellow and white. 
and we'll be focusing up again mostly through whites but because we start with a very intense amount of magenta and yellow in this really dark base color here we can afford to add white without it getting chalky so it's important to understand that when you mix flesh tones up like this if you want to mix up through white but you want to avoid the chalkiness you need to remember to add some good solid dollops of yellow and magenta into those mixes in order to counteract the chalkiness of the white you can see as we get up to the final highlight here that we've just got a really nice smooth white flesh tone very straightforward I'm also now just going to quickly skip ahead a few seconds to when I've done the facial hair, when I've got the lenses dotted in, stuff like that, because again, those are just more of the same, greys and things like that. The last thing I'm going to show you me working on here is the cape, which actually uses all of the same colours as the skin tones, but this time instead of focusing on white as we highlight up, we're going to focus towards yellow as we highlight up, only introducing white at the very last minute for the finest highlights. I'm going to shut up now and just let you watch this process come together because you'll have seen a lot of these things before. But after we've revealed the final look of this cape and we're all happy with it, we're then going to take you to some nice rotating sexy shots. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of that now. So there you have it, Sergeant Tellian treated like a traditional painting, and hopefully this will open the eyes of a few people to some of the merits of occasionally treating your miniatures a bit more like traditional paintings. I'm not necessarily saying this is something you should adopt as a miniature painting style for every miniature that you paint. That would probably slow you down quite a bit. It's a bit more time consuming doing things this way, but I do think that it's a very interesting way of painting a miniature that can teach you a lot about how your paints work by removing things like washes and metallics it gives us a bit more of an opportunity to focus on what our paints are good at and how we use them and so there's some really valuable skills to be learned from doing stuff like this now and again i had an absolute barrel of fun with it it was really really rewarding for me to paint this way but of course I am a traditional painter as well. I have a background in 2D painting, so it may not always transfer the same to everybody that tries it. Nonetheless, I do think it's worth having a go. It's really good fun and it's interesting. And at the end of the day, expanding our horizons is one of the most beautiful things that we can do as miniature painters. It is an expressive, creative art form. And so, you know, doing stuff a bit outside of our comfort zone is a great way to learn to express ourselves and create in ways that we maybe didn't think of before. Before I end this video, I should take a minute to say a huge thank you to Nick and Ben for the feature on Warhammer TV. That is massively appreciated. And I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it because I really enjoyed painting it. Now, as we wrap up the video, of course, the usual bits that we have to do at the end of every one if you liked it please do click that like button to let me know and if you want to subscribe and enable notifications you'll be able to stay up to date on what i'm doing on the channel finally i do also have a patreon which is linked in the description along with my social media if you want to help the growth of the channel and to continue to support me as i take this as my full-time job tiers start on patreon from as little as one american dollar which is about 70p every month and that'll get you some fantastic benefits so thanks for watching everyone i'll see you in the next one